Hi there, and let's get to it. We're still looking at the motion effects palette today, this time at the final column, which is the motion blur controls. They're pretty simple to use, but they shouldn't be confused for generic blurring effects, because what's happening here is a little bit more sophisticated. Just like the temporal and spatial noise reduction functions, the motion blur first analyzes your footage to understand what is part of the environment and what is a moving object, and then it will specifically target the environment without affecting the object itself. So what's quite unique about it is that the blur will occur in the direction that the camera is moving in and help generate a look of a low shutter speed on your camera. So it's a pretty powerful little tool. I've got a scene here in which we begin with what looks like a locked off shot, after which a character passes in front of it and the camera pans to follow him. I'm a little bit laggy, so I'm going to switch my playback over to half resolution, and that will enable me to play this back and watch it in real time. And what I would like to do is make this look a little bit more dynamic, because I think it's just a little bit flat. From top to bottom, you begin by indicating your motion estimation type, so that's really the amount of processing that's going to go into the effect. Faster kind of means worse, better kind of means slower. After that, we indicate the motion range. So just like with the temporal noise reduction, which had pretty much the same controls, this will just indicate how much the objects in your scene are moving. So if they weren't moving very much, then I should go for small. If they're moving very rapidly, then it should be large. I think it's not a very quick movement in my case. So I'll stick with medium. And we won't really see much of a result until we type in our motion blur amount. So as usual, I'll just start off with an arbitrary number off the top of my head, 15, and I'll Alt F to expand this and take a look, and then Shift D to turn off the effect. So that's pretty minor. I think I'm going to bump it up to about 40. Wait, okay, so that's a little bit more obvious. And Shift D to turn this off and on. And I find it quite interesting how we're seeing this blur behind the motorist, but not on him as much. Let's just take it to the extreme. Get rid of my full screen. And you can definitely see this effect once the camera rounds the corner and we're following him. The background becomes much, much blurrier. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time.